Greetings, everyone of you. I'm so happy that you made it to uh, the fourth episode of this series. Okay, you will recall that we have been handling a new series, which is Arithmetic of Finance. I really want to appreciate every one of you for, you know, your feedback and also for uh, acknowledging that this video has been of tremendous help in improving your mathematical abilities. I'm so glad to hear that from you guys. Okay, and I also promise to improve on the explanation and also on uh, the video. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's go to the class and see what we have uh, today. Remember, we stopped in episode 3 and this is uh, a continuation, episode 4. Alright, so this is what we have for you today. We're talking about weight and depreciation in today's class. Okay, so I want to remind you that... Um, it is natural in life, you know, to see that certain things grow, all right, uh, such as uh, weight of children, even adults, uh, such as uh, even age, our ages increases, okay, uh, even uh, the height of trees, and so on and so forth, okay. The price of goods also increases, the worth of assets also uh, increases in, uh, in price or in value, okay, and when this... Uh, when the increase has to do with uh, goods and assets, then we call that inflation. Okay? When the increase is particularly concerned with goods and assets, we call that inflation. That means the price of the item is actually increasing. Okay. So, but if, if these uh, goods and services or height of uh, a tree or population of a town, if these things are increasing at a definite amount at a definite rate. If they are increased at a definite rate, then think about it. Think it as compound interest that it is compounding. It could be that the height is compounding because it is now increasing, all right, at a constant rate. Okay, that means it is compounding. If it was a, a hundred dollars uh, initially, then maybe increasing at ten percent. Then of course after. Uh, one year, if the rate is 10% per annum, after one year, it's going to become $110. So it means that for the second year, it is going to be calculated based on $110 in order to give us uh, the next uh, rate of or the next uh, amount for the second year. It can also be the height and all that. So it can be treated as a compound uh, amount using the compound interest formula. So we can adapt the compound interest formula in solving inflation problem. Uh, population problem and anything that has to do with growth. All right, and of course, as we have seen in compound interest in episode three, this is when the rate is constant. We have explained all that, and of course, this is when uh, the rate of compounding is changing per given period. All right, then what is depreciation? Uh, depreciation is uh, a contrary explanation to uh, inflation in that in depreciation, the uh, the worth or the price of the item is actually compounding negatively, all right? Instead of uh, it depreciates, it, it loses value in the first year. Uh, in, uh, let's say if I with 100, it loses uh, value at uh, 10%, it became 90. In the second year, it's going to lose value again uh, using 10% of 90 to depreciate further and order to 9. So that is... A depreciation when it is compounding negatively. That is why you can also see that the compound interest formula has been adapted for a negative compounding. All right, that is why you see the minus here. Okay, and of course for this other one is also when the rate is changing. That's why it's having minus. So we have negative compounding. It is one minus the fraction, and of course we have positive compounding, which is uh, one plus, of course, the fraction arrow over one hundred. All right, let's apply these, uh, illustri uh, these uh, teachings now to different examples and see how they are used. Uh, example one, uh, we are told that the population of Imo State increases by 10% every year. If its present population is 1,210,000, find the population after two years. Okay, so it says 10% every year, so you should know that the rate is constant, all right? The rate is constant. That is what it implies, that the rate is constant. Okay? And you should know the formula to use once your rate is constant. 
Okay, and n is equal to 2, it's after 2 years, and you can see our rate and n are, of course, they are compatible because they are both in years. Okay, then, what is our p, depending on what you are calculating? Now, let's look at question a, alright, let's look at question a, they will now know what will be our p, so this is uh, the compound uh, amount, 1 plus arrow over 100, okay, it's for m for a constant rate compounding. Alright, so in question A, we are told that we should find the population after two years. Wow. Look at the question once again. It says it increases uh, by 10% every year if the present population is this. So this is the present population. Okay. That means it came from somewhere to this point. Alright. And question A says find the population after two years. So after two years is two years from now. That is the implication. Alright, so this value now, this particular value, will serve as the as original amount to get the next two years to come. Alright, because you always remember compounding is from where you are to where you want to go to. So this will serve as the input now, as the original amount presently. Okay, for this question A. Alright, so we now say our amount in two years to come is going to give us A into our P is going to be this amount. 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, into 1 plus uh, 10 over 100 raised to power 2. And of course, you know that 10 divided by 100 is 0 0.1. When you add it to 1, you have 1.1. 1 .1. You can use your calculating device to finish up this. And of course, the amount in two years' time is going to give us um, about 1 million uh, 464 a uh, thousand people okay this is what Imo state uh, resident is going to be in two years time question b he said the population two years ago what is the meaning of the population two years ago population two years ago implies that okay that it was something which we don't know so that means the original amount we don't know it so p is unknown do you see how we we are analyzing the question now but it's still two years ago so n is equal to two and of course, the rate is still 10% because you say it is 10% per year. The rate is constant. So you see the same formula we are going to use. Now, what is the amount? Now, if we don't know P, and this is the present value, the actual population two years ago. Remember, for it to be two years ago, means that it came from original something, which is P, to something now, which is this. So that means it's compounded from P to this amount. So this one, this uh, 1 million 210,000 that served as you know, the original amount for question A is not serving as our compounded amount for question B. So, that is how we analyze question. So, you have to analyze question. A particular value can serve different purposes depending on the question you are asked, as you can see here. Alright? So, this same amount now is not serving as our A because they say two years ago, what is the original amount? That means it came from somewhere, which is B, we don't know, to the present value, which is this other one. So that means our amount is equals to one million two hundred and ten thousand. All right. So if we see this, this, this same formula here, we have one two one zero 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 equals to p into one plus ten over one hundred. N is t two. So what is our p? Dividing both sides by this to detach it from p. Since you are looking for p, our p is equals to one million two hundred and ten thousand divided by uh, 1.1 1 .1 all square okay then divided by 100 is 0 0.1 and of course you give 1.1 1 .1 all square when you add to 1 all right so with your calculating device you cannot say that our p is equals to uh, 1 million people so two years ago uh, the resident of Imo state we are actually 1 million people all right I hope that is well explained Question 2. We are told in question 2 that a car was purchased or was bought in 1999 for 800,000 Naira and its value depreciated. Its value depreciated. It went down. That means the final answer is going to be less than this at uh, the rate of 15% per annum. So our rate is also constant. They say it's for every year. Okay, per annum. Alright, per year. Okay, calculate the value of the car in 2005. Alright, so that means our, our N is equals to 
2005, all right, minus 1999, to know how many years are there, and that is equal to 6 years. So our N is 6, okay, compatible with our R, which is also in years. Okay, so what else do we have? Talking about depreciation, so it is decreasing A is equal to P into 1 minus R over 100 raised to power N. Okay, so what don't we have now to finish up? We are looking for P. What is our P? A car was bought for this. So this is the original amount it was bought for. So it is going down. So our P is equal to 800,000 Naira. I hope you guys are following. So when you substitute into this formula, so your compounded, uh, your negative compounded amount, because it's compound negative, you're going to give us uh, 8 exponent 5, okay? into 1 minus 15 over 100 raised to power 6 and if you use your calculating device to finish up this you are going to have that after 6 years that the worth of the car is going to be approximately okay going to be approximately 301,719 that is going to be the worth of the car all right, approximate value has some decimal points, so that's just approximately. Okay, uh, I hope that is uh, well understood. That's a very simple and straightforward question. Okay, by now we should be getting used to how the questions are framed. Okay, let's look at the next question. It says a machine was bought uh, two years ago. Its value de decreased by 10% each year. By 10% each year, that means R is also constant. All right, so R is 10% per year. Okay, um, if its present value is this, this is the present value. Okay, if its present value is this, for how much was it purchased? Now, from this question, you now know what to do with this uh, present value. For how much was, past tense, was it purchased? Was it purchased? So that means the original value is unknown. So uh, P is equals to unknown, question mark. So we, we don't know it. So that means our A. The compounded amount is this uh, 19,083 uh, dollars. So that is our amount. So our amount is equals to 19,083.6. That is our amount because it came from uh, the original amount, okay, and decreased negatively to this amount. So that means our final answer, which is P, must be higher than this because. It was high before, but because of loose, uh, loss of value, it went down to this. Remember, you're going to have A is equals to P into 1 minus R over 100 raised to the power N. And of course, what is our N? Our N is equals to 2, because it's say 2 years ago. So, when I say our, our this thing, if you substitute into the formula, all right, we have uh, 19. 083.6 is equals to P unknown into 1 minus 10 over 100 raised to the power 2. So we are looking for our P. So what do we do? We detach this other one from P by dividing both sides by that amount. Alright, so let's say our P, our P is equals to 19083.60. Uh, divided by uh, 0 0.9 all square, 0 0.90 all square, okay? Uh, of course, this is uh, 10 divided by 100 is uh, 0 0.1, 1 minus 0 0.1 give us 0 0.9. And when we finish all this, what do we have? We are going to have our P, of course, is approximately... Uh, $23,560. So that is our P. That was the original amount for which uh, the machine was uh, purchased. Okay? I hope uh, this is well understood. Any question? Alright, so no question. Let's look at uh, another question or quickly. Question 4. It says the cost of a car purchased two years ago depreciate at the rate of 20% per annum per year. 20% per year, so the R is constant. No problem with that. Okay, two years ago, so our N is equal to 2. Alright. 
uh, if its present value is this, so this is the present val value, uh, 300 and, uh, uh, 315,600 Naira, find the value of the car after two years. After two years. That means, it's similar to the same question I saw before, so there's no much explanation. After two years, that means from now, two years from now, that means the future amount. So that means you don't know the amount. So A is unknown. And of course, P is UNASA. This UNASA as P once again. So you have it as 315600. All right. So what do we do? Similar thing we did for the last question. One of the questions we solved, I think in number two or so. So we now say from our amount is equal to P into 1 minus R over 100 is the appreciate raised power N. So our A is what? We are looking for it. So A is equal to this and P is uh, 315, 315600 into 1 minus the rate is 20 over 100 raised to power 2. So when we use our calculating uh, device, what do we have? We have our amount after two years to give us, in two years' time, to give us 201,984,000, okay, in Naira. So this is the answer for this. Question B. In question B, what are we told? We are asked to find the value of the car, uh, uh, its value uh, at the time when it was purchased. That means the previous price. So at the time when it was purchased, meaning that uh, P is unknown, the original value is unknown now, similar to what I've explained before, then this 315,600 Naira is serving as the uh, uh, depreciated amount, okay? It is not a depreciated amount because it was something before, before it not depreciated to 315,600, which is the present value. So we don't know what it was before, then what it depreciated to the amount is now 315. Uh, 600,000 and what again do we need is T two years ago okay so N is equal to 2 and it's still based on the same constant rate which is 20% uh, percent per year alright so now say we now substitute that 201.984 is equal to uh, P uh, into 1 minus 20 over 100 raised to power 2. So what is our P? Our P is equal to 2, 1, sorry, so we now substitute. So we now say that uh, using the same formula again, so we now say that our amount which is uh, 3, 1, 5, uh, 600 is equal to P uh, into 1 minus 20 over 100 raised to the power 2. So what is our P? We we'll divide both sides by this to detach that from P. So our P is equal to 315600 divided by uh, 0.8 all square. Okay? When you solve the internal bracket, and of course, with your calculating device, what do we have? With our calculating device, we'll find out that our P, the original amount two years ago, is actually a bigger amount, which is 493,125 Naira. So this is the amount two years ago when it was purchased, the original amount. Okay, hope that is uh, well understood. All right, so... Let's look at uh, question 5. It says, if the rate of inflation is 15% per annum, how long will it take for the price of an item to triple? Okay? Uh, leave your answer to the nearest whole number. Okay, so the rate of inflation is 15% per annum. So the rate is constant once again, which is 15% okay, per year. All right? 15% per year. Then, how long? We don't know it. N is unknown. Then, what is this again? How long will it take for the part to triple? So, what do you mean of triple? Of course, triple means times three. Double means times two. Okay, so triple is times three. 
So that means if uh, our P, uh, if original price is P, okay, and I say, let original price, okay, original price be uh, P, okay, that implies that our amount, because it's going to triple, okay, becomes 3P. This is inflation, all right? The asset, somebody want to know uh, how long I should take for his asset to triple. Maybe he bought a land, all right? And you know in that particular city that the land appreciates 15% per annum every year. So you want to know how long it take for your land to triple. Maybe before you can sell it and make profit. So using our appreciation uh, compounded formula, A is equals to P into 1 plus R over 100 raised to the power N. So when we substitute, we have our A is 3P, 3 times the original value, our P is also P, into 1 plus our rate is 15% divided by 100 raised to the power N, which is unknown. And we are looking for N, so what do we do? First of all, our N is contained in this bracket, so just like change our sort of formula, let us remove P from this bracket first, okay? So the Bible side by P. Okay, so if we divide both sides by P, I want to have 3P divided by P is equals to um, 1 plus 0 0.15. Okay, this power N. All right, so uh, of course P, we cancel P. All right, they now have 3. That implies that 3 is equals to uh, 1.15 raised to power N. At this point, what do we do? Now, many students have, we have a tendency of giving up here. They have tried, they'll get some math, but what do we do? Now, if you look at this, if you look at this an initial equation, but it's not uniform, because our left-hand side is just ordinary number, which even if that is expressed in indices, it, does, it cannot be expressed in the same base with our right-hand side. The base of our right-hand side is uh, 1.15, and even if we put one raised to power 1, the base is 3, so they are not uniform. So what do we do? So, since you are dealing with the equation, and the equation has to do with uniformity of mathematics, all right, of your left and your right hand side. So, indices is not handicapped. What do we do? We now have to transpose. That is why indices and log dim is treated as uh, two sister topics, okay, treated together. So, we transpose to log dim. So, when we take the log dim of both sides, so we now say, take the common log, common log dim of both sides. Okay, now common log is usually used because some calculator cannot do uh, a different base of both sides. So we now have log 3 is equals to log 1.15 raised to the power n. And from the power law of logarithm, this one will come over and multiply it, become a multiplier if you have done the power law of logarithm. So now have log 3 is equals to n log uh, 1.15 okay 1.15 so this is what we have and of course we are looking for our n so we we'll remove this one from n that implies that our n is equals to we we'll divide both sides by this log log 3 divided by log 1.15 all right so when we we'll use our calculating device to finish up we are going to have our n is equals to 7.86 7.86 years because it must be in years since our rate is in years for them to be compatible and therefore to the nearest whole number our n is equals to 8 years so the owner of this asset will actually wait for about 8 years for his asset to compound uh, to the triple, whatever is going to be the amount, we are not told the amount and all that. But in that particular city, the owner of this asset, okay, if he has an asset, any asset he has, a bit land or whatever, he will have to wait for approximately eight years for the price of his asset to triple for him to sell it. That is what he wants to know. How many days it take for him to uh, to wait for the price of his asset to triple? And that is it here. Alright, so remember I took uh, common logarithm here. Common logarithm here actually is logarithm to base 10. That is common logarithm. Okay, so calculator cannot operate uh, in other bases. So that's why I use common logarithm of which every calculator uh, has.
All right, so we come to the end of uh, this episode four. I just took uh, simple questions. Uh, in the next episode, episode five, I'm going to take more advanced questions uh, on this uh, uh, depreciation and growth. Have you learned something? Is, is this video helpful to you? Did, did you really understand uh, why we did some of our things we did? And if so, if this video has been beneficial to you, please do like the video, hit the bell button, and also help us to subscribe to this channel. Don't be selfish. Recommend this video to friends of yours, to people you know, or students who are struggling with mathematics, people who are preparing for examination and they need a quick revision uh, material. They need an audiovisual material to help them. Or you can also recommend it to schools that are looking for uh, learning materials to teach their students. This will be of tremendous asset to every one of them. Thank you very much. We'll see you in episode 5. Stay put. Thank you for watching.